what I'd really like to talk about today is the idea of not being good enough. So what is this idea and why do we have it and what does it really entail? Where did we get this idea from and how to move on from it? The idea of not being good enough, um, it really is hiding the assumption of I am not worthy of love, of being accepted as I am, words and all. Unless I achieve such and such and such, unless I am perfect in everything I do, unless I am loved by a member of the opposite sex, if you're a heterosexual. So the idea is I on my own, just as I am, I am not worth anything unless this and this and this. So you can probably see how this is problematic because we are constantly comparing ourselves to this version of ourselves out there that one day Maybe we will be, and then when we are there, then we'll be happy. But surprise, surprise, we never get there. Now, I could go into the different kind of addictions that stem from this, such as the love addiction, uh, the work addiction, you know, being a, uh, an overachiever, or having to be perfect, and, and, and the addiction to approval. Um, but perhaps we can go into that at different uh, stages in future videos as they are, it's a very big subject. But what I would like to look at today is where does this idea of I'm not good enough comes from and what can we do to move on from it. So when we were born as babies, um, we didn't have these ideas, did we? We were just had needs. All babies have needs and they express them to their carers. Now when some of these needs are not met, that's when the problem starts. Now the world is imperfect, our carers are imperfect. Everybody carries their own wounds that need to be healed. Often from generation to generation they will repeat the same mistakes and recreate the same conditions that they were subjected to when they were growing up unconsciously most of the time. So what happens is if we don't get our needs met as young children, we have to somehow cope without these needs being met. Now as a child we don't have the cognitive capacities to understand that the world isn't perfect, that our parents aren't you know, are wounded themselves or they're carrying on with these cycles of abuse or whatever that may be. And it's too scary, too threatening to think that the world is an unsafe place where our needs might not be met. So rather than think, oh my God, I live in a world that's unsafe, children just naturally put it on themselves and think, well, it must be me. It's me. I do not deserve to have my needs met unless such and such and such. And we project this idea of ourselves that one day will be enough to have the needs met. The other thing that starts to happen is that we start taking on board the roles of the people that have conditioned us unwittingly to be this way so we start to treat ourselves the way that they treated us. So if we for example had carers that were very critical we start being critical of ourselves as well and we think that this is the way to get there to that ideal self when one day we will be loved and accepted as we are. But really all we're doing is carrying on the cycle of abuse which now has become self-abuse. So what do we do with this? How do we move on from this? So the first thing is to realize that this kind of thinking is just a consequence of 
all the conditioning that we have been subject to. We begin to see also that this way of treating ourselves is not helpful. It is hindering us in our, uh, in our lives, in even getting things done or getting the relationship we want and, and being happy and fulfilled. So we then recognize the need to do something about this and the healing process starts. Now the healing process starts with being first of all aware of this conditioning. You know, the things that have happened to us, not because we want to blame anyone, it's not about blame, but it's about recognition. This is what's happened and this is the wound I'm carrying. This emotional pain is stored in the body a, a lot of the time unconsciously and we need to release it. Now there's many therapies that, that help with that, and of course I'm a hypnotherapist, so I'm gonna talk about hypnotherapy. Inner child work with hypnotherapy is very useful with this kind of process, so that we can go back to those experiences that are associated with this feeling of not going, being good enough, and we can release the emotions, and we become the parent that we wished we had. Loving that child, giving that child, that inner child that's always there inside of us, that love and acceptance that's unconditional, that we deserve and need to thrive in this life. Part of the healing process is also forgiveness. Forgiving the people involved, not necessarily for them, but for us, because when we hold on to resentment, we do not move on. We are stuck in that resentment, in that place of pain. So the forgiveness is necessary and we forgive through compassion, through understanding that all of us, ourselves, everyone around us is going through their own journey and we are all wounded and we all need healing. So through compassion, we are able to let that go to let it be something that has happened in the past. And we then come back to ourselves, forgiving ourselves as well, for not knowing how else to react as children to those circumstances that were less than ideal. Once we've done that, that's when we can start to use cognitive techniques like CBT, you know, to examine our beliefs and actually begin to recondition ourselves, choose to recondition ourselves by choosing the things we say to ourselves, by choosing to be that nurturing parent that we wished we had. What would that nurturing parent say? And practicing day after day, day after day, being that parent. That parent that believes deeply that we are worthwhile just because we are, worse and all, because of our imperfections. And that doesn't mean that we give up on improving, it just means that we choose to do that, not because we have to, but because we want to, we choose to. But we are also okay, even if we didn't. So that is the way to slowly but surely feel enough and when you're enough it's much easier then to get love from other people to get where we want to go with our life to achieve because it's not a demand there's no neediness there's no dependence there is just preference choice now in the next few videos I'd like to talk a little bit more about how we apply this sort of cognitive um, techniques to move away from work addiction, love addiction, you know, perfectionism and such like. So this is all for now, for today. Thank you so much for listening and see you next week.